Hello and welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to get secret radio stations with the right radio. Both these receivers are set to 93.3 FM. They're both playing the same program. If I tune up on this one, I get static. If I tune down, I get static. Now, if I go to this radio and I turn it up, and I tune up one, you see it's still 93.3, but different programming. If I tune up again, a different program, but it's still 93.3. What's going on? In order to understand what's happening today, we need to go back to 2002, when Ubiquiti introduced something called HD radio. In its simplest form, it allowed for the embedding of a digital signal into the analog frequency of an FM station. HD radio offered up to four multicast channels with no static, no hiss, and better audio quality. I wanted to do a YouTube video at that time, except there were very few HD radio stations in the Americas, and the small number of available receivers were very expensive. Plus, YouTube didn't exist until 2005. Fast forward to 2024, and now 78% of US stations have HD radio, yet home receivers are sparse as ever. Receivers are still on the expensive side, and we're spending more time listening to YouTube than to radio. After 22 years, why isn't HD radio everywhere? Well, there's some bad marketing. The manufacturer charges the radio stations and manufacturers a license fee. HD radio signal is more difficult to receive than FM stereo. Competitions from audio streaming services. And there are just not too many choices for consumer radios. The easiest way right now to get a radio with HD radio is to buy a new car or install it as an aftermarket replacement. For those wanting HD radio at home, the choices are very limited, which is why when I saw the insignia drop from $60 to $39, I thought it might be worth getting. Note, this is a tabletop FM and HD radio. That's right, no AM. Inside the box, there are two different language user guides. Along with the power cord is a wall ward, which is rare these days. Inside the padded foam bag is the radio. Starting on the back, we have the battery cover for the four AA disposable batteries, not included. A pigtail antenna port, which allows you to bring in more distant stations, and that's included. The aux, which allows you to plug in an audio device to use the radio as a speaker. Next to that is the DC input for the power cord. Finally, the 29.5 inch telescopic antenna is secured out of the way until needed. All the controls are located on the top from left to right, memory recall, memory preset selection, tuning direction, volume control, HD seek, aux source, and finally the power button. On the right side of the radio is a stereo headphone jack. After inserting the batteries, which can be challenging due to the poor layout, pressing and holding the power button presents a salutation. Do note it takes two seconds to power up and an additional four seconds to read out the frequency. It comes with two one and three quarter inch speakers. It weighs about 1.3 pounds which makes it kind of semi-portable. It measures five inches tall, about eight inches wide, and about two and a half inches deep. A nice touch is the soft padding at the bottom of the unit. The two and a half by one inch blue LED display is capable of two lines with 16 characters. It also indicates HD, has a signal strength bar, stereo indicator, and multicasting status. The bottom row can display RBDS, that's Radio Broadcast Data Systems, which can include song titles, artist, album, genre, 
comments, commercials, URLs, but this information will vary from station to station as to what they decide to implement. Just know that before you can listen to HD radio, the receiver has to lock onto the FM station, which in the case of this radio, it has DSP, digital signal processing, so it's fairly easy. But then the signal has to be strong enough to trigger the stereo light, and only then will you be able to get HD radio. If the station offers more than one multicast channel, you will see the HD light up with a number and a plus symbol. Stations can choose to run up to four multicast channels. Only HD1 is backed up by the analog FM signal. So if you lose HD1, the radio will seamlessly default to FM. You've earned at the end of your first year is what we do. Well, I'm doubling everything now. Double dating, double dipping, double feature. For the remaining multicast channels, for example, HD2, the loss of a signal will result in just silence. There is no FM backup. Fun fact, in order for the flawless fallback from HD1 to FM, the station has to apply an eight second delay to the FM analog signal to keep it in sync with the digital time delay. Tuning through the band, we get to 88.1, which for showing no signal strength, doesn't sound bad. And she was on the ground in Paris in June, meeting with all the different stakeholders in the Olympics. At 89.5, we get WETS, which is about 90 miles away, and sounds pretty good considering it's only showing one bar on the signal. However, now that Russia's kind of distracted by Ukraine, that might not happen. I wouldn't count them out. At 92.5, we get two bars and enough of a signal to activate the stereo circuit, and eventually it switches to HD1. Note there is no plus sign, so this station has only one multicast channel. Even with the signal dropping down to one bar, it maintains the HD status. With a strong signal, you can expect HD lock within six seconds. Note, 93.3 has more than one multicast channel. This allows the station to offer very different programming on HD2 as it does on HD3. Attaching the pigtail antenna improved reception, showing the limits of a sensitive receiver are actually due to the antenna. Depending on the proximity to the station transmitters in your area, you may be able to get by with just the telescopic antenna. To better judge the quality of the speakers, here's a recording using stereo microphones. Now here's a recording from the headphone jack output. And you be the one who's loud. Reason to praise him. Anybody got a heart that sings and made a lie? Come on, testify, testify. Whatever he wanted, smiling, getting out of the pocket, hitting Keon Coleman. My impressions of this radio is that it's sensitive enough to pull in distant stations, but to get them in HD radio, you will need to have a strong signal. The closely spaced speakers limit stereo imaging, but you can get better stereo imaging through the headphones. Switching among the multicast channels is bi-directional. The display automatically dims after one minute of inactivity, but simply pressing any button will brighten the display. Using the power cord does not add noise to the radio, an issue with earlier versions. By the way, if you're looking to buy this used, look for revision B at the bottom of the unit to ensure that you have the latest model. In use, the top mounted controls are easy to accidentally engage while handling the radio. I would have preferred them along the front edge. 
I must say I wasn't really expecting a lot of performance from this brand, but I'm happy to say that this radio has exceeded my expectations and I can recommend it. If you found this video interesting or useful, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment, join the subscription team, and as always, thank you ever so much for watching.